record. Well, we continue. Uh, we were at this step, I guess. This step. Well, no, no, no, no. We were somewhere around this step. Yes, input and output. So we just had to use the same. Well, we thought we were going to modify it because we were going to use different pins, but since the new pins that we introduce are input pins, switches, and since this register uh, requires uh, these pins to be zero because they are input pins, and since the value that we have loaded previously was making those pins zero already, we did not change the value. Okay. So the direction register, the value that we load to the direction register did not change. Now, in the analog function selection register, as you remember, to disable the analog functions, we did two steps. This port control register was cleared so that it is a general GPIO. And we, there's the second step is we clear the analog uh, function selection register, I'm sorry, alternative function selection registers to zero. How to do it? Well, previously, we have made these pins to be zero. Again, very similarly, this pin corresponds to, well, yeah, let me just show it to you. So in this register, we've got zero, zero, zero, zeros, one, one, one, one, zero, and zero, zero, zero. And these pins corresponded to PF1 to PF3. But this time, we are going to change these ones as well. We are going to make these ones as again as well because this is a bit clear. We are clearing them. So instead of this value, we are going to use one F again because this is this is F and this is one. So this is one F. Okay, as you can see, this is one F. Clear all these significant bits. We could clear all bits. We'd be selecting, deselecting alternative function for the rest of the pins as well, like PF5, PF6, PF seven the pins that we don't use that would make that wouldn't make a change it would have been the same because we are manipulating the necessary pins the way we want to manipulate so it doesn't matter but this is a way of doing it always remember this okay we're about to finish and yes here i go instead i could clear all significant bits or all bits this one this one they would not make a change. Okay, so now a new step, color blue. Uh, we did not complete this step in previously, but we need to complete this step. Now, to understand the idea, um, remember that we are connecting a negative logic switch, which means when we press the switch, when we press the switch, a negative connection is conducted, which means we are connecting this pin to directly to ground, okay? When you connect something directly to ground, there is theoretically no resistance. So it is like a short circuit to ground. A short circuit to ground from a pin means any current, any amount of current can flow. At, that's something, I mean, um, something that we have to be careful about because if we do that, just, that's not, that's not the best thing to do. I mean, uh, you could just harm your card. So in this case, we have a pull-up register that's called a pull-up register right here, which we can enable. So that it means that if this pin is connected to ground, this pull-up register will be serially connected to that circuit. So effectively we will have the uh, pin here and it will be actually providing us a resistance, and that resistance will limit the current flow. That's called the pull-up register. I, I'm sure in Gökhan's lessons and or Selçukoca's lessons, you have seen this. That's called the pull-up register. So, which pins do we have? Uh, the switches PF four and PF zero. And if you check the data sheet, uh, for thirty-two pins, this this is for example is pin zero. This is pin thirty-one this pin 15, this is pin 16. So these pins are reserved. We don't use them. So if you make any of these pins one, they will activate the pull-up registers for that specific pin. So for PF7, PF6, PF5, 
I don't want them, but PF4, which is connected to switch one, I want it. PF3, PF2, PF1, I don't want them because they are connected to the LEDs and I want it. So this is a bit zero. So this is actually hexadecimal one, one. That's why I'm loading hexadecimal one, one guys. I'm enabling this pull up register, which is already inside the card so that when the switch is, pre is pressed, which will be zero volts ground connected to the pin, the amount of current that will flow from the pin to the ground will be limited because of the pull up registers. Simple. Hocam bir şey sorabilir miyim? Please, please. Ee, hocam buradaki switch dediğimiz şey e, yazılımsal bir switch mi? No. Yani yazılımla kontrol eden bir no, switch no, mi no, yoksa? No, no, it's exactly. Yoksa exactly. kartın üzerindeki switchlerden exactly. mi? Exactly, that switch on the card. Yes, I'm going to show that to you. O zaman acil durum butonu gibi bir şey diyebilir miyiz buna? Why do you think that is acil durum butonu? Ee, bu mesela kimi şeylerde emergency buton oluyor hocam. Sistemi kapatmak için. Well, how you are going to use that switch is, uh, I mean, up to you. We This switch is connected to port F. And when you press the switch, this switch, this, since this is negative logic, and this is the plop register, when you press the switch, PF0 will read 0. When you release the switch, PF0 will read 1. There is nothing else. You can program this for any of your purposes. Okay. I mean, there is no other purpose. It's just a switch that you can connect. Actually, you can connect the switch to any pin you like. Just connect the switch. Just buy a switch from Konya Sokak. Just connect the switch here. You can create a switch in. This was PV1. PV1 as well. And you'll have to configure PV1 accordingly. Just mm -hmm. change its direction to input. Make the plop register on. Or if you don't want to make the plug register on, maybe you add a register in a separate circuitry outside and just connect it. You can do it yourself as well. Then in that case, you won't have to enable it. So it is all, I mean, generic. Okay? Hocam o zaman bu switch şey gibi mi? Diş gördüğünü mü bilmiyorum ama tuhaf bir örnek olacak. Bu zikirmatik diye satılıyor ya dışarıda. Butona bastıkça bir sayı arttırıyor sürekli. Well, uh, well you're talking about functions. How you function, I mean, what happens in the, uh, when you press the switch is a function. So that function is being programmed. I mean, we didn't program anything. We are trying to make it programmable first. So you can create a zikirmatik out of it, or you can create anything out of it. So I think we are not clear yet. Ya şey hocam, bu switch dediğimiz şeyin buradaki bağladığımız zaman, hani clock gibi mi çalışıyor diye düşünmek istedim de, hani... İstediğimiz zaman bir bitti, istediğimiz zaman da sıfır biti mi veriyor diye düşünmek istedim. But it's, it, you're thinking so um, complex. I mean, it is very simple. Uh, it, it is, I mean, so simple. It's so simple that when you press the switch, PF0 becomes zero. When you release the switch, PF0 becomes one. Nothing else, nothing more to it. You can create a zikirmatik with this card. If you put necessary assembly codes, which will read PF0 accordingly, that's a function. You need to write codes for that. So it has no function yet. We are configuring it. It didn't make sense to you, right? Okay, it will make sense in time. Okay. So it can be used as zikirmatik. No, there's nothing stopping it. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so direction and look, the pull-up registers, uh, unlock function and the pull-up registers, as you can see, and the pull-up registers. So why did I put ones to that to enable it? Because this register, sorry, this register is defined such that if you make the necessary and corresponding pins one, the pull-up registers will be enabled. But as I say, if you make connect a circuit, this switch is already connected and there are no uh, switches, uh, res resistors on it. We are using the resistors inside by activating it. But if you connect the resistance of your own here, you don't have to enable this, okay? Remember this. Digital enable bits, the final thing. Previously, we have done this for, again, for these pins only. 
zero zero zero zero zero one one one zero pf1 to pf0 but this time we'll have to make these ones as well because we'll be using pf4 to pf0 all so that's why instead of this value i will loading loading one f again okay or with one to all or you can do one to all of them which will enable all pins but we don't want to enable all pins so we'll just we just want to enable the first five pins from pf0 to pf4 that's why we are enabling these values. Okay, any questions about the initialization before we continue? Okay, good. Now guys, we have the GPIO initialized for port F's five pins now. Two pins for switches, PF0 and PF4. PF1, 2, 3 for LEDs. They are already connected to switches and LEDs. We can use them. How to use them? The same way we did. For the output pins, we have written over these addresses so that it will be outputted outside. For input pins like switches, we will read the necessary pins so that it will be inputted to inside. How to do that? Well, this is a piece of code just showing it. For example, we have initialized all of them. And we have R4 pointing to PF4. What was PF4? The pin mapping for the fourth pin of the um, port F. It is already connected to switch one. So R4 is pointing to PF4. R4 is pointing to PF4. Good. So what I do is I get the value of PF4 to R0. I read R0's value. So guys, very clearly in R4, R4, all pins are don't care. All pins are don't care. The only pin that I care is the PF4 pin, which designates the digital value of pin 4. And pin 4 is connected to the switch, guys. Remember? To the switch. If it is released, remember the circuitry? If it is released, if I don't press it, it is 3.3 .3 volts, which means 1 when it's released. When it's pressed, it is connected to the ground. It is 0 when pressed. So this function checks for pressing. How? I get the values of R4 and I compare R0 with this value. As you can see, this value is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, or zeros. So when I compare it, you remember, I make a subtraction of the PF4, this pin. The don't cares are always zeros, don't forget. So I have, this is the mask, and in R0, I have the values of this pin. So these are all zeros. But this pin, if it is pressed, it is zero. If it is released, it's one. Let's think that it's released, that I didn't press it yet. Then these two numbers are the same. When I compare them, the subtraction operation will make the zero bit high because the answer will be zero. So if the zero bit is high, it says go on like this. So this little code piece will loop forever unless this is pressed. Because when it's released, the Z bit is always one. So it's loop. So if this becomes zero, this condition will not hold and it will continue. So this is a loop which will continue unless I press the switch. Any questions? We are going to do the code, don't worry. Any questions? Okay. Now, imagine I pressed it and it went out again. Now it starts this line, uh, this loop in which I again load it. So this is zero, zero, zero, zero, zero, zero, something, zero, zero, zero, zero. 
and the mask is the same. Zero, zero, zero, zero, zero. One, zero, zero, zero, zero. I make a comparison between them, but this time this is not BQ, this is B and E. So imagine I just pressed it and this is zero. When you make the comparison, the Z bit is not zero. So when it's pressed, it will be looping forever. But when I release it, this will become one. And the Z bit, the operation of the Z bit will be high and it will continue. So if you put these two codes sequentially, one after another, this will be checking if the switch is pressed and released. So it is like, wait, uh, uh, press the switch to continue button. Because the code will not continue unless you press and release the switch. Any questions? Let's do the code. I mean, while you're asking the question or preparing your question, let me prepare the code. Okay, let's prepare the code. Do I have PF4? Do I need PF4? Yes, I have PF4. Good. So I'm going to be writing the same code files. LDR R1.2 PF4. Now, wait. Press, let's say. It says LDR R0 R1. I read the value inside R1 because that's where it points. Okay. Then I compare R0 with 1, 0. Actually, it is no different than writing 1, 0. It's the same thing, but I just. And if it is equal to 0, which means it is not pressed yet. Loop back. Wait. Release. Release. LDR R0 R1. I compare R0 with this number because it's VF1. And B and E. Wait. Please. Okay, do you think this will this code run, guys? Is there anything wrong with this code? Be careful. Trick question. Okay, this code will not run. There is something missing. Any guesses? Hocam birinden birini yazmamız gerekmiyor mu? Yoksa orada gidip gidip gelecek. Uh, well, uh, the thing is, uh, no, the code is actually, this piece of code is right. I'm going to show it to you because unless I press it, this will be looping here. When I press it, it will jump here. And when I release it, it will continue. Hocam, so that's the purpose. Hocam initial değer olabilir mi acaba? Sorry, I couldn't hear. Initial value Ex olabilir mi acaba? Initial value, what is initial value? Mesela R1'in gösterdiği adresin içindeki birinci değer. But, but we are writing over R1 here. So whatever you had here, we are writing over it. And uh, yeah, you, you, you, you're, you're saying that if other pins have some values, will it be a problem? Yes. Yes. So how to make sure that other pins don't have any value? How to... Uh, Sıfırlamak the others. Or. Okay, you're just well, evet. working. Uh, just Direkt working. Hocam, sıfırla. Well, that's that's a nice thing, but it was a procedure we have done. Remember? So I, I'm going to make the questions a bit simpler for you guys. Do you think this switch will work? Because we don't know yet if PF1, PF4 is output or input yet. Is PF4 an output or an input pin? Input. How, how do you know that? Şeyden çünkü e, şeyimiz oluyor. Switchimiz oluyor. 
Or why? I mean, if you don't you have to configure it? Yukarıdaki adrese bak karar veremez miyim? Well, uh, PF4'un adres şey gösterdiği adresi. PF4 is pointing to the fourth pin of port F, but it could be input or output. You can connect switches or LEDs, doesn't matter. You have to configure it as input or output. Output. So did you configure it? Yes, uh, can you see the initialization procedure here? Because the code starts here. We didn't do the initialization, guys. So we have to do the initialization first. That's it, guys. That's it. Or doesn't have to be necessarily here. It could be after this one as well. So that was why it wouldn't work. We didn't do initialization. Now it's initialized. Port F, LED, and switches in it. So it's a bit different from the previous one. If we just go and check it, Port F, where is it? Geçtim ya. Bence geçtiniz hocam. Geçti şuradaydı. Hey, it's here. So as you can see, port lock. And pull up registers. So additive, everything we have here. So let's try if I have, if it's working. Let's see if it's working. So guys, no errors, just build it, load it, good. Now, let me just run the code. Okay, now I'm just going to step over, not inside, into the initialization procedure. I'm going to go here. Guys, this is going to get the value of this pin and write it to R0. I'm using this pin mapping, pin mapping. The difference between pin mapping and the other mapping is this pin, this pin mapping, you only read the value of this pin. The other pins cannot be read. They are zeros. So these addresses, these addresses are used to read only a single pin. So if you're reading only a single pin, these addresses are safer to use. You can read that pin from here by ending and stuff because this data register will give you all pins. But I don't want that because I'm just looking at single pin. So this is a safer and easier way to get it. So both can be applied, but I'm, I'll be using PF4 because I want to read only PF4. And when I'm using this address, I'll, I'll be checking this pin only. The other ones will always be read as zero or they cannot be written. So let me read it, guys. It will be written to R0. Is R0, neden yazılmadı? It is FF. So they're all ones. Neden böyle oluyor? Allah Allah. Bir saniye düşüneyim arkadaşlar. Ben hepsini bir okuyor yani. Evet, uh, we have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. Böyle olmaması lazım. We just cannot read a PF4 value, guys. Let me find the reason. PF4 yanlış mı yazmış acaba buraya? Yo. Data register kullanalım o zaman. Uh, there's a, there's a, there's something wrong. Let me just share it with you so that maybe you can help me. When I read R1, the values of R1 to R0, R1 points to PF4, what I expected was to read these pins. And since I was not pressing the switch, and since this is a negative logic switch, I expected it to be 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. However, the value I read was 0, 0, 0, FF. It read all the pins of port F as one. So most probably we are doing something wrong. What are we doing wrong? I don't know. We are going to find out. To find out, to debug what I've been doing wrong, I'm not using this pin configuration. I'm using this, okay? GPIO port. And I'm going to be reading all the values here. Let's see. It's not going to read only p port, uh, uh, uh, uh, pin four. But the, all the pins. Let's say, let's see if it, it's working better. Allah Allah, yeah, I'm not Okay, load it. 
Okay. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I realized the problem, guys. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm really sorry. So I'll tell you. Guys, uh, it, this was our code, remember? Now the problem is, I have written, yeah, I'm going to show you the problem by debugging. That's, that's a very <laughs> stupid mistake. Guys, uh, now in R1, I have the address of PF4. Can you see this? Can you see this? Yes, sir. I'm going to step over BL4, uh, this uh, in, uh, subroutine. Be careful, guys. Read the value of R1. I lost it. Because inside R1, inside this initialization routine, I'm changing R1. That's why I'm not reading these pins now. I'm reading some other place in the memory, in, the, in some other control register. So I should be, I should be, I should be putting BL to here, guys. Does this make sense to you? Did everybody get my mistake? Okay, now it, it's going to work. Now PF4. Now I'm going to read PF4. As you can see, it is zero one because I was not pressing it. I'm going to compare R0 with uh, the same value. And in that case, Z bit will be one. Be careful, Z bit is one. And since Z bit is one, it's going to jump back. Okay, it jumped back. Now I'm going to read one, but this time I'm going to be pressing switch one. So it, which was switch one? Switch one is this guy's. So it's Zebra's test. Mirror olduğu için mi ders? Tabii ki mirror olduğu için ters ya. Durun şunu değiştirmeye çalışayım. Niye böyle? O da kafanızı karıştırmasın kendi tarafınızda. Evet. Perfect. Müdür gitti değil mi arkadaşlar? Evet. This is switch one. Exactly. Now I'm pressing switch one guys. While I'm pressing switch one, I'm going to press F10. And I'm going to read the value. This time it is zero, guys. Because when it's pressed, it reads zero. Okay, I don't have to press it anymore because it is red. Now, guys, I'm going to compare R0 with this one. They are not the same. Z bit is zero, so I continue. Okay. Any questions? Okay, now imagine I'm still pressing it. If it is still being pressed, it will still read zero. And when I compare them, Z bit will be still zero. And while I'm pressing it, it's going to be in the loop. As you can see. I'm going to release it and it's going to be going out of the loop. In slow motion, it sometimes doesn't make sense, but I'm going to make it more sense and make it look like uh, it's making sense. How? I'm going to be putting a breakpoint here. Now, guys, I start my code. Now I press F5. If I press F5, continue this one, it's going to jump and jump, it's going to continue but it won't be able to reach here because first it will be inside this loop unless I press it. And unless I release it, it will be inside this loop. I press F5. As you can see, you cannot see the, as you cannot see, there are no yellow triangle here because it's inside this loop now. Now I'm going to be pressing first. I pressed and released, it jumped. So it is like press the switch to continue button. This piece of code is press the switch to continue. Let's do it again. Now it's in the loop. It didn't come here. I pressed it still in the loop because it passed this loop, but it's still here. When I released it, it is here. Okay, 
So this is a press the switch to continue button code. Any questions? Hocam, o zaman şimdi bizim bu yazdığımız iki kod aslında sivice basılı tutup basılı tutmadığı hallerini mi gösteriyor bize? Yani istemize göre kullanabiliyoruz. Yes, you can use it for our purpose exactly. I mean, how you're going to use it is your design. This is some fundamental uh, function. How you're going to use it? Use your design. I mean, there are many ways that you can use it. It is the design. Actually, we are not interested in the design now, whether it's something like the example you have given or something else. We are trying to understand the mechanism. Okay. Hocam, peki bir şey daha sorabilir miyim izniniz olursa? Please. Ee, hocam, peki diyelim ki biz bu hani switch'e bastığımızda çalışan bir sistem kurduk diyelim. Ama altında işte bir yan işlem yapıyor ya. Hı hı. Peki yani iki farklı ayrı kod çalıştırabiliyor muyuz? Hani biri switch'i kontrol ederken diğeri işlemleri yapsa. Exactly. Yani, Very good question. Çalıştırdım, çalıştırdım ama belli bir yerden sonra ki artık kapatmam gerekiyor. Very good question. Nate. Why it's a very good question? Because while this guy was waiting for me to press, it was busy. It was waiting, busy, and it couldn't do anything else. And that was not right, right? You're asking this. Yet. That's called busy wait. And actually, the only way to uh, change this is called interrupts, which is the subject of the next week. Okay. And yes. You felt the subject of the next week, which is nice. Exactly. I mean, think of a computer when you press the key, it cannot do anything else. That sounds stupid, right? But it doesn't work like that. There's something called the interrupts and actually a single microprocessor can run multiple tasks all together. But it switches between tasks so quickly that you don't understand. To switch between tasks, you need a mechanism of just cutting one operation and continuing the other and just switching between. That mechanism is called interrupt, guys. And We'll be talking about it next week. Good. Okay, I think that's how, ah, by the way, this is a nice code I'm going to be talking about. Let me show it to you. So I'm going to restart the code. It's just, I'm going to stop debugging. So that while debug, it doesn't allow me to. Guys. Just show you, do I think it doesn't work? Okay, yes. Now guys. This code is, you have, you have a color here, but when you press this switch, the color starts to change. When you release it, the color stays. When you press, it starts to change. When you release it, the color stays still, kind of. So guys, uh, this is a code that I want you to just analyze for the next week. And where is that code? Let me show you where is that code is. So it is here. So it is, sorry, week 11. So previous uh, years lab. So this is this is the sheet. As you can see, rainbow switch. Control the speed of the rainbow flow with switches. Okay, but before that, let's 